Today, this GPU was built from the ground up by one man. You may have to turn down your Intel CPU. This fixes ray tracing and Ryzen 9000 is already shipping. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, one man just built his very own graphics card from scratch. It's called the Fury GPU, and it was built by Dylan Barry, a software developer who literally built the PCB, GPU, drivers, software, all of that in his spare time. The GPU itself is based on a Xilinx FPGA design, which is basically a highly configurable semiconductor. It's almost like having a silicon with a blank slate. To understand how big of a feat this is, remember that Intel has put years of development and billions of dollars into their graphics cards and still have a long way to go. The Fury GPU GPU took Dylan four years to develop, but what's wild is that he claims the hardest part of all was developing the Windows drivers. Ultimately, the GPU comes with a 400 MHz GPU clock and 480 MHz texture unit clock, PCI Express Gen 2 x4 interface, and four independent tile rasterizers. So yeah, it obviously won't be challenging NVIDIA's 4090 anytime soon, but he can get it to run the QuakeTime demo at 720p 44fps, and he claims that there are ways to get it running Quake much faster. Apparently he saw some bottlenecks that he can optimize for. What's wild is that he's hoping to eventually open source the project, but there are apparently some legal issues he needs to work out. Either way, it's unreal to think that one man actually built and coded a working graphics card all by himself. But first, if you love staying up to date on all things PC hardware, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld and hit that bell icon. Next up for today, developers from the recently released game Outpost Infinity Siege just issued a warning for those who run a 13900K or 14900K CPU, claiming that users should downclock their CPUs to avoid crashes. Now I will say that the game hasn't exactly gotten the best reviews since its release with quite a few clear issues with crashing, but the developers have been releasing patches for the game already. Plus, if you remember a little while back, I discussed a story about power limit issues on some motherboard that basically gave the CPUs unlimited power in default BIOS settings. Now, you may be quick to blame motherboard manufacturers, but remember that it's Intel's job to set standards for their motherboard makers. And typically, this wouldn't even matter because most CPUs have protections built in for runaway power draw. But for whatever reason, these new CPUs are still having issues. At the time, a ton of games were affected, from Alan Wake 2, The Last of Us Part 1, Hogwarts Legacy, and multiple other titles. Now, we're hearing directly from developers that users should downclock their 13th or 14th gen i9 CPU all the way down to 5 GHz as a temporary fix. They also suggest changing your power settings to energy saving mode in Windows. Regardless, it's looking more and more like Intel pushed their recent CPUs a bit too far. Next up, we all know that ray tracing is a hotly debated feature in new GPUs. Some say it's completely useless, while others find it to be a huge leap forward in terms of graphics fidelity. And to be fair, it is a mixed bag on how well it actually makes a game look. From night and day differences to where it almost looks like a brand new game to nearly indistinguishable changes. But there's a very understandable reason why a lot of gamers don't turn the feature on. And that's performance impact. Simply put, ray tracing can have a devastating impact on your FPS. In today's story, it looks like Microsoft is aiming to fix that, as they recently published a new patent that finally adds LOD or level of detail in the ray tracing pipeline. For those who don't know, LOD is a feature that's already used in 3D graphics to change the details of textures and polygons as they get further away on screen. This makes sense, given our eyes can only perceive detail when close to objects anyway, so there's no reason to use processing power where it isn't need it. This should reduce the performance hit to the GPU when turning ray tracing on, as well as reduce the VRAM needed, so it could have a huge impact on the technology moving forward. Of course, it'll still have at least some impact on performance, but every little bit helps. And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs were just spotted in a shipping manifest by known leaker Momomo underscore US. As you can see, it flat says Granite Ridge on the shipping manifest, making this AMD's Zen 5 based desktop CPUs. And there are two chips here to look at, a 6-core CPU and an 8-core CPU. Obviously, the 8-core part is likely Ryzen 7, while the 6-core would be Ryzen 5. The 8-core part has a TDP of 170 watts, while the 6-core 
for is at 105 watts. With that said, these are likely engineering samples, so the TDP may not be indicative of the final retail version. Remember that most rumors point to next gen being Ryzen 9000, which is looking more and more likely, especially given the fact that AMD actually recently released Ryzen 8000 on desktop already. Either way, it's set to use TSMC's 4 nanometer process, but retain the same 6 nanometer I.O. die that we saw in Ryzen 7000. What's wild is that this was found literally hours after shipping manifests were leaked for AMD's next gen Strix Point and Fire Range APUs. Basically, AMD has already begun shipping out next gen parts, so they're clearly moving along well, making for Ryzen 9000's debut sometime later this year very likely. So while that does it for today, do you think you could make your very own GPU from the ground up? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!